Okay. Welcome to our home. And in honor of Earth Day, I wanted these beautiful Proteus and Leucodendron flowers to be to be a part. The neat thing about these is that once they get established, they don't need any water. You don't have to water them. So it's, it's special beauty, just a special beauty. And, All the right. de- and the deer don't like them either, right? The deer don't like them, yeah. and yeah, they're then they're pretty easy to grow mm. if you live in a warm, well, fairly warm climate. Mm. Mm. So, tell me, everybody, what does this say to you right here? <laughs> <laughs> it says fireworks to me. <laughs> so some of these I grew in our in our garden not not all of them but 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 some of them i'm really happy about them all right so um yeah so so today's little lesson is about going beyond your fear and your resistances to doing what you really want to do or doing what is what is in your destiny what you're being called to do. So I have a short story. Barry has a little bit longer, very powerful story. So um, before we wrote The Shared Heart, which was 42 years ago, our, our first book, I was um, just a very, very quiet person. I'm still a very quiet person, but I was also very, very shy, very deeply, deeply, inward person and I still am all of those things but but I've learned also to be express myself which you're doing beautifully right now (laughs) (laughs) thank you Barry so I used to have before we started writing our book I used to have these nightmares and I'd wake up in this sweat and and just Barry would wake up and like what what happened what was your nightmare and my nightmare is that I was standing holding a microphone in front of a large group of people. That was my nightmare. That was my nightmare, my biggest fear. And that dream would come again and again and again. So we started writing our book, The Shared Heart. And if I would have known that writing the book also meant I was going to have to do exactly what my nightmare was, I never would have written the book. I never, I never would, have, would have done that. But for some reason, I thought, oh, you write a book, people read it, and that's it. <laughs> uh, we wrote the book, and it was so popular that we started getting invitations from all over this country and Europe to give talks. Mm. And I, you can only imagine how afraid... I was, and and at first I just refused. I'm like Barry, you can do this. You you're you're really. And he's, he's like, no, we're gonna we're gonna, we wrote the book together. We're gonna do this together, and I'm I'm gonna help you, and you you did. Mm-hmm. And the be- beautiful thing is that is that you believed in me, totally, and yes. more than I believed in myself, really at that point, to be able to do to be able to give a talk. And um, so Barry gave me something that was really helpful. I don't actually use it now, but but because my work was with children, which I loved, he said, just when you're looking out, don't see these adults. See a bunch of kindergarten children, and that will help you to relax. And so that's what I did for the first number of years. I would just try and picture a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of children. And and that made it that made it a lot more fun. And then I, of course, I grew into the comfortableness of holding a microphone and speaking to to groups of people. But I am so grateful that Barry, that you helped me mm-hmm. work through my fear, and that I was willing to accept that that help, and that I was willing to to go through that big block in me because I love the work that we do. I love it 
so so deeply and and I I don't really want to ever retire. I just I just love it so, so much. So and we love doing these videos too. Although it's not a big audience in our living room, but we're imagining all of you. Okay. And right now I'm imagining all of you as little kindergartners and how just adorable you are. <laughs> anyway, at the same, probably around the same time that, you know, we were being invited everywhere to speak about couples and, and relation, relationship and consciousness and all kinds of things, I was still a doctor, okay? I, I went to medical school, I worked as a doctor, and there was a certain attachment that I had. You know, I put in all the time. You know, I, I needed to be a doctor, right? You're still a doctor, Barry. I'm still a doctor, right? I still am. Yeah. Um, but this final job that I had was uh, at our local university, University of California, Santa Cruz, in the health center, you know, working with the students with health issues. And and I do remember, I mean, of course, I, I loved working with the students, but I also was feeling that this was not my destiny. This was not what I really was being called to do. But I didn't have the courage to just quit, even though I was working half-time at the time. Um, my boss who was the medical director, one day called me into his office and he said, Barry, this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done, but I'm firing you. I'm letting you go. He read the shared heart and he felt that that's where my passion was. And he, he saw every day I was actually not passionate about medicine anymore. And so he was actually letting me go. And, and then he said something, I'll never forget this, as long as I live. He said, I wish I had a boss above me who could let me go, because my passion also is not medicine. He was a musician, and he loved playing in a band, um, playing music. And then he said, I just don't have the courage to, to fire myself, right? And I remember it was such a beautiful moment. We were, even though he fired me, right? We were both in tears and we're hugging each other. And... Um, but I knew it was the right thing, you know. Part of me was very, very clear that he was doing me a great service, and he knew it too. And uh, the really sad part of this story, which really um, is a powerful lesson, is that a month later, my boss fell over in his office of a fatal heart attack. Um, he didn't have the courage to go for his dream. So the universe called him, you know, somehow. But, I mean, this story, I mean, it just is so, it just touches me so deeply. I'll always be grateful to him, always, you know, for setting me free. So I, you know, I really want all of you who are listening to this to have the courage to, first of all, listen to what it is that you're being called to do. It may be not what you're doing now. It may be what you're doing now, but maybe different, or maybe more. But listen. Listen to these callings and face your fears. That's my message. Why you getting that? I, I remember Barry called me, um, and he's, he told me, he said, I've, I've been fired. 
And of course, this was a 100% brand new experience. Mm -hmm. And I just felt, I, I'm like, I'm going to come right away. It was only a half hour drive. And I dressed, we had our, little, our daughters were just little, little girls. And I dressed them in dresses. And we went out and, and picked all these beautiful flowers. They each carried a little bouquet. And we, and we came and Barry ushered me into this man's office to bring him the flowers. And he saw us and he just started to cry. And he said, I love Barry so much. I want you to know that. <laughs> and, and his love was so great that he, he did set you free. Oh, I know, I know. And then we worked yeah. full time on the work that we've, yeah. that we've grown to love so much, our, our workshops and writing, writing more books. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, I'm still a doctor. Yes. You know, we have attendants next door with little kids, and they, they get sick sometimes. They call me because they don't want to go to the emergency room and wait all those hours. So I go over with my medical bag, and I look in their ears and listen to their lungs and, and uh, help them. And I, I love doing that as long as I'm not being paid. <laughs> You'll always be a very good Dr. Barry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, last Monday, besides being Passover, and we celebrated that at our last video, but um, it was also Earth Day, and we, we did mention it. But um, I did write a song for, for Earth Day a long time ago, and I wanted to share that with you. takes care of us she gives us all that we need the earth oh she's aware of us and we need to take care of her the earth ah she takes care of us she gives us all that we need The earth, oh She's aware of us And we need to take care of her We need to take care of her The trees they breathe The rivers cleanse the mountains watch it all You and I Earth and sky The future waits our call The future waits our call of love, each act of love saves the earth, each act of love, each act of love saves the earth, oh, oh, oh. each act of love, each act of love saves the earth, oh, oh, oh. each act of love. Each act of love saves the earth. Oh, so think about that a moment. Close your eyes if you want. Each act of love, no matter how small or big, saves this earth. Even just a conscious breath is an act of love that helps all people. It's that big. What we do, sending out light, sending out love, growing beautiful flowers, 
You know, it's these acts of love really help the earth. Okay, so open your eyes and and remember this lesson, you know, the, what you're being called to do, each one of us has a unique gift to give to this planet. Each one of us, no matter how small it is. Well, thank you so much for, <clears throat> for watching these and yeah. loving us and for your, for your mm -hmm. comments and, and your support. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you.